hello and welcome back to the Old Rope Salvage Workshop. And what have we got in this week's episode? Let's find out, shall we? Well, this week it's all about cleaning out a very grubby 47-year-old petrol tank and then trying not to set fire to it in various different ways. Health and safety, please look away now. Don't set fire to me. And figuring out how to restore the massive heavy duty leaf springs by taking one apart and then putting it all back together again. Join us, Lisa and Tim, in our workshop at the Barn on a Farm as we continue the restoration of our 1975 Bedford truck and attempt to build ourselves a tiny off grid home on wheels with nothing but a tiny budget, true grit and the occasional whiff of desperation. So the challenge is, at the moment, I've got to work out all these and uh, you've got to do all these. Great, okay. Well that sounds pretty straightforward. So we've basically got a petrol tank and some leaf springs. So I've come in, I've found all this in pieces. Maybe let's have a look at how we got here. Should we do that now? Do you want to have a look at that? Yeah. As well as restoring, priming and painting various random pieces of metal all week, the main focus has been on cleaning up, draining and inspecting the old 100 litre petrol tank. Like most of the things which have come off this old Bedford, it looked pretty ropey to begin with, but after a little TLC it has come up pretty nice. It's galvanised, so after applying paint stripper and thinners, Tim got it back to the galvanised coating, which is still in good condition. So the plan, after draining it of the residual gunk, which apparently used to be called petrol, cleaning it out and degreasing the inside, is to prep up the coating on the outside and apply some good old epoxy primer and finish it in the black top coat. Uh, right, I need to find some more parts for Lisa to plate when she comes in on Monday. And uh, this looks like a good source of bits. The front leaf spring. I wasn't sure what to do with them, so the best thing to do probably is take one apart and then work it out. Well, um, that wasn't too bad really. A couple of the little uh, retainer bits got stuck because the uh, the bolt got stuck in this little chibi bit and uh, it was jammed up. But um came apart not too bad. I thought on first glance it looks pretty bad on the inside, but um, I don't know if it will be. There is some rust in places, but I think it's kind of We'll have to see. We'll just sort of knock, knock that off and have a sort of have a look to see how badly pitted the, the metal is. But I don't think they're that bad. I'm glad I took it apart. Absolutely. Because um, I can just remove all the rust that's in here. We're still unsure how to treat these. You can't plate them. Uh, you can't put too much paint, I think, between the layers because it, eventually it will wear away and leave springs packers being saggy. Um, some people just leave them bare metal, um, oil them up or whatever. Not really sure. Gonna clean the steel up, see what we can find to put on a really, really thin coat of paint. Uh, and also, um, it, we've got lots of um, bolts and bits and pieces that are all gonna need sort of cleaning up. Some of the bits need plating. So, uh, yeah, well, that's one of them. There's three more. The ones on the back are even bigger. This thing weighs so much, it's incredible, it's so heavy. It's pretty looking. I love the colours. Like sure the doors when they threw me on the floor while Johnny and Tina punched and kicked and swore and all 
Ah, that's mucky. That's dirty old work that is. It's not going to get all the rust out of all the pitting places, so I think ooh, I might go over all of these with this and then we'll think about just going over sandblasting them uh, where they're really pitted because that's good enough but not where there's rust left in behind. So, yeah. I've got to do some sandblasting later, I might go over one and see what it goes like. I don't really want to sandblast all of these, because there's, there's 9 in the front packs. The rear ones have uh, 8 plus some extra ones. So that's like, what's that, like 60 odd sides to do out of all of them. Obviously 9, that's 18 sides to do. Oh, I'd be here forever sandblasting them. And we don't need them that good. So yeah, I'm going to do this on all of them. When Tim first told me he was going to take the leaf springs apart and restore them piece by piece, I confess that a little part of my soul died. As always, there is always more work involved than you think. This time lapse, for example, is a speeded up time lapse of a time lapse, and that's just grinding off the rust. But it wouldn't be a nut and bolt restoration if we didn't restore, well, every nut and bolt now, would it? And he does promise it will be worth it. If he can find his way out of the dust, that is. But when I'm not between the sheets, I'm busy staying undercover. Ain't as sweet as it seems me in the juggler. I've not been too sure what to do with these leaf springs. For anyone who's not aware, this is actually basically the suspension. <laughs> I suppose I should explain that. <laughs> these things actually bend, and it's what the uh, it's the spring in for the whole truck. Uh, the weight of it like works on these, and these are what gives it this the springy motion. And there's a few questions really about what you do with them, how you treat them, and what process to keep them from going rusty. You can't plate them because it can render them very brittle and liable to explode. Uh, they're too big to powder coat. And um, right in the early days, apparently back in the day, they used to um, keep these like greased up and oiled. But obviously you have to keep the dirt out if you do that. Because if you have them oiled or greased and you're in somewhere sandy or dusty, all the dirt can work its way in and just like wear them down even more. So um, oiling them for us would be a bad idea. Quite a few experts saying that you really shouldn't paint them because they all stacked together on top of each other. If you, put, if you paint both sides of them and stack them together, you end up with like two layers of paint between each leaf. And in the action of them working, they can they move and it will gradually wear away the paint and it can actually leave the whole pack of these being a bit baggy, so uh, and they, they need to be packed tight. So one thing that people do is just wipe them off, bolt them back together again, and that's it. Uh, maybe oil up the outside of them a little bit and just wipe them down, so uh, and that'll be it. But we're kind of, I'm thinking, I've got some old stuff that we've used before, uh, this stuff, called O-Troll Oil. Now this is like a drying oil, so it doesn't stay all sticky on uh, like liquid or anything. It actually dries like a, a linseed oil or Danish oils or that kind of thing. But it's really good on rust 
Uh, you can put it on actual pure rust and it holds it in really good. We've used it a lot in the past. So I'm kind of thinking, these have been ground down now. I think I'm gonna go over the sandblast uh, where they are pitted and where there's any extra rust left in them. And then I'll probably just go over them again with the, uh, the poly disc, what I used to grind these down. And then coat them with a layer of this. Let them dry, bolt them back together again. And then as a whole pack, we might just give it a, a lick of like nice looking paint on the outside. So before everyone falls asleep, um, Andy got this more. All right, so you're going to plate these. Okay. So what are we doing now then? All right, I'm going to, I've got sandbar these, you've got to plate them. Fine, all right. That sounds like a good division of labour to me. Get in the sandblast intent, you. From sandblasting into a bucket of very smelly green acid, then onto the wire brushes for a bit of buffing. The strip back bolt goes into a brew of alkaline cleaner, then out into another acid, which etches the surface ready for plating. Into the plating bath at 0.1 amps per square inch for 20 minutes, then back out for a good rinse in clean water before going into the gold passivate. 24 hours to air dry and the bolt is almost as good as new again. Zinc plating the hundreds of pieces of hardware in this way is a long process, but it is incredibly rewarding to restore these rusty bits of metal into freshly minted treasure. And it sure beats trying to find hundreds of new imperial nuts and bolts from the internet any day. So my job this week is to do all the zinc plating on all the bits from the leaf springs, which is a pretty straightforward job actually. And it's going really, really well. So I did a load yesterday. Um, I'm actually only in for like two or three days this week because I've got to go and do some, you know, paid work, boring. I've got a lot to do and all the pieces are really sort of big. So I can only play one bit at a time. Probably already shown you that bolt being done. That was this one, I believe. Now, I'll show you these all properly at the end, but they've come out brilliantly, all of them. I'm really, really pleased. I don't know if it's like cleaning up or the solution that we did last week, but um, I've put some extra brightener in this morning. They're looking really good, apart from one of them, which is this nut, which um, as I was getting it out from hanging up to show Tim and say, look how brilliant this looks, I dropped it back into the zinc plating uh, solution. So. It's gone a bit orange, but hey ho, it'll do. So this morning I've just got a few things to finish off. I've got a couple of these massive things, which will probably take a little bit of doing, and a couple of other nuts and bolts, which Tim is in the process of cleaning up for me now. So hopefully I will finish all of that today, and then I'll get them out and show you what they look like. I went over these with the uh, polyabrasive disc and got rid of the worst of it. Um, some places it's come up quite clean on the inside there where it's smooth. But where it's quite rusty, you get this bit where it's actually quite hard to get off. The, uh, the rust goes really like hard. Um, I can't remember, it's got a particular name, but I can't remember what it is. It's hard to get off. So I figured I'd go over with the sandblaster just kind of almost lightly. So I did that on these just kind of went over it quite and then went over it with the um, poly disc again just to smooth it back out again a little bit so um, it kind of gets a lot more of the like the rust off it um, so that's what I'm doing really I'm going with all of these just giving them a light going over and going over the sort of grinder again and now after that we're going to oil them all stack them back up put the bolt back through get it back as a pack and then maybe put a 
better coat and paint over the whole lot, I think that's what we're going to do. Right, that's the uh, the leaf spring put back together again. Now, <laughs> I have record. I did record this, and I have recorded sitting here talking about it about three times on the little camera. But it doesn't want to work. It's not recording. It got very wet the other day. I tried drying it out. It looked like it was going to work, and now I can't get anything out of it. Anyhow, so this has been put back together again. Um, we cleaned up all the leaves, uh, sandblasted them, go, went over again with the grinder. Uh, I then put uh, the Oatrol oil between each of the, uh, the leaves where they touch each other. Uh, spreading it on with a rag so it got a nice thin coat but went into all the pitted areas to sort of coat where, where it had been rusty. And hopefully it will stop it rusting out from the inside for a while. I really like the look of it in silver. Um, I'd quite like to leave it like this, give it a nice slavering of the oil and like just leave it. But I think what I'm going to do is, I've got to paint a couple of other things anyway, I'm going to give it a light coating of epoxy uh, primer, not too heavily, just enough to cover it all, and then probably going to like aerosol can it in some satin black, just sort of spray over it, give it a little bit of a, uh, protect it a little bit. But um, yeah, it's looking pretty good, quite a bit of work in this. And there's three more. The back ones are even bigger, but so hopefully I can get this uh, painted up, and then uh, we can see how good the bolts are. I'm gonna go back on it, see how well Lisa's done her job with those. Well, Lisa did her job pretty well, and then Tim did his by applying the epoxy primer to the leaf spring off camera again. But we've all been here before, so we know the drill. And then the next day, with the light rapidly fading and with the help of a handy torch, because extreme painting in the dark is what we do around here now, Tim applied some satin black top coat to the leaf spring. And we all hoped it would still look all right in the daylight the next day. so we can like throw a bit of light onto this. Um, we'll get some good shots of it once Tim's finished putting it together soon. Yeah, I might um, <laughs> go and drag out the uh, the one from the other side just so we can have like a little bit of a comparison. Yeah, and remind yourself of all the other ones you've got to do. Get on with it then. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Practically finished. <laughs> you sit there for a second, I'll finish it. Goes there. So, slightly strange thing that we are now about to do is uh, weld up the rust spots on a petrol tank. Now you might think that the words welding and petrol tank probably shouldn't really go together, but Tim assures me that having experimented with a blowtorch earlier on in the day, and it didn't explode, that we're going to be fine. So what we're doing is, on the other side where Tim's going to be welding, there are some tiny little rust spots that have actually gone all the way through. 
So he's going to weld from that side, whilst I, with my trusty staff of copper, I'm going to put this in the hole and going to hold it against the rust spots. And Tim is going to weld against that. So the weld doesn't stick to copper, as I think we've probably mentioned this before. So it should just give a nice flat finish on this side and not all drop through into the petrol tank. Um, I knew that I had some like little pinholes. They've come from the outside of the tank where the strap has been rubbing and rubbed the paint off. So it's not rusted out from the inside. And I looked around and thought, ah, how can I repair this? What paste can I stick in it? What glue can I put in it? Can I put fiberglass back in it? And I was thinking about it and I'm going, what are you doing? Fix it properly. I mean, and the only way to really to fix something like this properly is to, is to weld it up. Now, I don't really want to be cutting out big areas and welding in whole plates, but uh, we're going to see if we can get these done. I've already done a couple on the top and it looks like it's all okay. So we'll weld it up and then we'll kind of test it to see if we've got any leaks in it and uh, go from there. Also, this would have been much more fun filming if we'd been able to put our little GoPro into the welding, into the petrol tank while we were filming. But unfortunately, there was a flood at my house the other day. A massive torrent of water poured in through the house, into the lounge, and a wash over our little GoPro, where he was charging up with his little door open. The irony is that he is waterproof, but not with his little door open. It was a bit of a bad night, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought I'd rescued it. We put it in like rice and stuff, and she, but I've been trying to use it today, and it's sort of like it's not, yeah, not working. So we did actually film the incident, but when we went to have a look at it, there was only audio. But it's quite a dramatic audio. We'll just yeah. listen to the audio of my house flooding. Anyway, we've had water, now should we create fire? Let's hope we don't lose the little bit of copper inside the petrol thing. Yeah, don't do that, don't lose it. Don't set fire to me. Saturday evening it's going dark so hope you can see us and I can't even remember what we've done as <laughs> usual these weeks just yeah, seem to yeah. be rolling <laughs> into it's going each dark other. <laughs> even though we have uh, again decided not to follow the rules and regulations of time and relativity <laughs> and we've stuck to uh, British summertime uh, we hoped to get a little bit more done, as always. The fuel tank uh, was hoped to kind of get that finished, but that's pretty good now. There's quite a bit of faffing about with that, with welding it up and, and making it good. Yeah. So you'll see that probably finished in the next video. I bet you're really excited. Yeah. <laughs> and the leaf spring. The leaf spring, leaf yeah. Spring one. Leaf spring one looks fabulous. It wasn't a huge amount of work, really. 
it's just everything takes a bit of time and you add it all up and every, you know it takes time but yeah it's great it's been serviced gone over it with like de-rusted it and treated it for like further and it looks really cool and uh, found a couple of places where the the, the bolts have been damaged so we're replacing those and doesn't my plating look good looks really cool yeah, yeah. it's quality plating there just yeah. hope it lasts a little while <laughs> So what's next? Petrol tank finishing off? And... Yeah, I'll finish the petrol tank. I'm going to move some stuff around because I want to get yeah. at all the, the very few last things that are remaining, which is not looking so much. So yeah, we're going to push the chassis out of the way a little bit and then move the axles into centre stage. Yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for all the lovely comments. Yeah. And, uh, the, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. the comments and the support and welcome to any new subscribers we've had a, a little smattering recently yeah. so um, we're welcome. really happy that we can entertain a few people <laughs> yeah. we've said it before we really appreciate it it makes a huge difference to our morale so yeah keep commenting keep giving us the thumbs up and we'll keep making some videos for you so indeed we will <laughs> until next time Take it easy. Yeah, see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I've got to go to the shop now and get some peas. <laughs> I was firing, she was gasoline.